Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to be Bible journaling in Galatians chapter 6. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And I've created a sketch that you can use either for a full page like I am, or you can just use a section of it. Use one of the boots and the shovel and some of the bulbs down below, and you could just draw that portion in the strip along the side of your Bible. I'm using watercolor pencils and I'm going to be showing you a couple of different techniques and the differences between them as this video goes on. One of the fun things about watercolor pencil is you could just kind of scribble the color and it doesn't really matter a whole lot if they blend because you, when you add the water to it, it's going to blend and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do some blending. I recently launched a watercolor pencil jumpstart class and over on my teaching website where you may know that I have Bible journaling classes, as well as other classes on art mediums. The watercolor pencil jumpstart class teaches a lot of different techniques. It doesn't teach them on Bible paper, so things act a little bit differently on Bible paper. And I'll show you a few of the techniques from the class in this particular video, so you get some ideas on how you can use them for Bible journaling. The watercolor pencils I'm using are Albrecht Durer pencils and they are quite nice in quality. There are lower quality ones and they're fine to use, but just know that with all pigments, with any kind of medium, the higher quality you get, so the more artist grade, you're gonna get more pigment. It's just the way that things are made. The, the way that they make less expensive ones is to cheap out on the pigment a little bit so you get lighter color. You can increase the color in those kinds of products by doing multiple layers though. And you can, you can get a little closer to this kind of a look. So I'm starting with blending with a baby wipe and I've showed you guys that before and I'm doing that just in the areas where my finger is small enough that I could get in there and do the blending. And if you have a smaller finger than I do, you might be able to do more with the baby wipe. But what happens is the baby wipe <clears throat> ends up kind of lightening the color so you can get a lighter shade with it, but it also uses less water. The brush will use more water and it often will leave more pigment on the paper. Uh, the baby wipe just soaks up some of the pigment, so that's what it causes. Now, on this ground portion here, I wanted some texture. I wanted to show you something cool. I've got a tea strainer, just a regular old tea strainer I bought at the grocery store. I keep it in my crafty stash. And I'm grading basically some of the pencil onto the paper. And the paper is already wet, or at least damp. So I'm kind of tapping into that. And all of that, that little powder is creating a really interesting texture. I'm tapping on it with the baby wipe. If you were to use a brush over it, you wouldn't end up with that kind of texture the brush would just kind of blend it all out, but that gives you the texture instead. So I went back in and wanted to add a little bit more into the color at the top, so I added another layer. And as I said, you can take a less expensive kind of colored pencil or watercolor pencil and add another layer to it and darken that color. But I'm adding some strength to a few areas, so I added a shadow underneath of me as I'm doing my gardening here. And I'm not much of a gardener. I do like to grow some bulbs, and I'm about to go out and plant some bulbs. So that's where the inspiration for this came from. And as I was reading in Galatians about sowing the things that you want to reap. If you want to reap the things of the Spirit, you better sow the things of the Spirit. For the bulbs, they're basically ovals with roots hanging off the bottom and little starts of the plant at the top. You can put as many or as few, you can make them large, you can make them small, you can plant seeds down there. Whatever it is you're planting for the harvest that you want to reap is what you would put down here in the dirt area. And notice that I'm just putting it right over all that texture. I didn't bother drawing them in first and then adding texture around them. I just did the, the, uh, the coloring right on top of the, the textured area. And I want to add more dark around each of those areas. Now you could go in with watercolor and you could add color around there and use a brush and you know move all that color around. I decided I wanted to try some of the watercolor pencils, so I put a little heavier watercolor pencil 
and then tapped around it with the baby wipe again. And that's going to give me a blended look that looks very much like the texture I'd already created. And you can decide how strong you want that to be. Do you want really dark area in there so you can put white lettering in there? Do you want it to stay really light and put dark lettering? And that's often what I'll make for my judgment as to whether or not I want a darker or a lighter area. But here's the difference between what you can get when you put watercolor in there. I can mix my watercolors as thick or as thin as I want and then do the baby wipe on top of them to tap a little bit and also get a texture. So if you don't have the ability to get a little tea strainer and use that, you can just tap into something wet with your baby wipe. It's a different texture than the fine sand grain that you'll get using the tea strainer, but it still works. And I'm just mixing up colors so that I can get something really dark in there and adding in a bunch of different colors to my brown. So I added a reddish color, I added a blackish color. You can add blue in there and try to darken your color as much as you wish in order to create the look that you want for your page. And I wanted to have dark a dark area down here and then blend it slowly so that as it gets to the area where the shovel is, that I don't have a harsh line there. So I'm just gonna tap along some of this so I get a little graduated area up at the top. And you may know, I iron my pages. If you have this much color, you wanna retain this much color, wait till it's dry before you put a piece of paper over top of it because that's the ironing will lift the color if it's not already dry. The ironing will flatten it whether it's wet or dry, but you could end up lighten it, lightening it significantly if it's not dry yet. So now my page is ironed and flat and I'm gonna add more details to it. I'm gonna go around the edges of each one of my bulbs and give them a little more depth and then I decided I would make it a fall picture since we're in the autumn scene, at least at my house. I don't know if it is yours. You could add green trees back here as well. And I just added a couple different colors for fall trees, a little strip of green and some blue sky. And again, I'll use the baby wipe to just do some real soft blending. I want it to be a, a scene out in the distance. I wish I had beautiful fall trees like this all over my yard and a huge area to plant all of these beautiful bulbs in, but there you go. I don't have that. I have a very small yard and I just put a couple new bulbs in each year. So I'm just tapping the baby wipe to blend the color very generally and blending even the grass into the yellow a little bit. So all I have then is some blocks of color and I can add in a few little, little lines here and there for tree trunks and then leaving the rest of that very soft and muted because I don't really want to add too much detail because that's not where the, the picture is not all about that. The picture is about the bulbs and the planting of them in the front. So I decided to add some lettering on it. I'm adding that using a micron pen. And then even down here in the bottom, I'll use a micron pen for putting some words in here for what I'm going to be sewing in each one of my bulbs the kinds of things that, that I want to reap in my, my life and in my heart. And then I added a prayer at the bottom. And my, my whole thing about this page, what did I sow today and what did I reap? It's a good question to ask every day. What do you want to plant in your life? Do you want to plant the word or are you going to plant a cheesy novel? <laughs> are you going to spend your time with the Lord or are you going to spend the time with worldly things and that's a good question to ask every single day and get our priorities straight so i will see you again next week have a really wonderful week and i'll talk to you soon